Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to 7 for 7. Amen. Amen. Uh, God is so good. Yes, he Amen. Is. Let's go to the throne. Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we, we surrender all. Thank you, Jesus. And we ask, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you would bless your people. Lord, that you would comfort them. Lord, that you would speak and stir their hearts, that you would draw them ever closer to you. Lord, that you would empower them, Heavenly Father, to stand and to withstand everything that is coming their way, and that you would be glorified in all that is said and done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Well, we've been talking about are you in the fight? Amen. Amen. And of course you are, but... It's like sometimes somebody is there, but they're not there. That's right. Amen. And so sometimes we're in a fight, but we're not fighting. That's right. You know what I mean? You're being victimized you or up. you feel, <laughs> yeah, you gave up. You gave up and you just figured this is what it is. It is what it is, right? Yeah. How many of you felt that way? How many of you got into that place where you've just surrendered yourself? In Second Kings excuse me, in 2 Samuel 11, and it says, And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth unto battle, that David sent Joab. Now, what's so significant about this scripture is, is that David sent Joab to fight the battle. And, and David was the king, and it was time when kings literally went to battle. And they, instead of sitting in the back, they were in the front, Come on. if you will, fighting. And I need you to understand, because, because David perhaps was wary, or Dave, something happened to David when he no longer wanted to engage in the fight. Come on. It was at a time when he should have continued to fight. And I say to you, because oftentimes we get to that place where we're not engaging in the fight. And David needed to fight be because his lack of desire caused his mind, his body, and his soul, or if you will, to take, take control, right? And, and, and the reality is, is that he needed to fight in all those realms, he needed to fight with his soul. He needed to make his soul determine that it would fight. Amen. He needed to let his mind, if you will, um, fight. And of course, he needed his body to fight. And because he did not, he found himself on the roof that night because it was a sleepless night. And he looked down and he saw <laughs> this woman taking a bath. Right. And obviously, he knew it wasn't her, his wife. Right. And he inquired of his servant, who is that down there, right? Servant had to look hard enough to see who she was. He says, that's Bathsheba, Uriah's wife. And he sent and, 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 and to, to her and took her and laid with her, right? David wasn't fighting. He wasn't fighting for himself. He wasn't fighting for her. He wasn't fighting for Uriah. But when we choose that we're going to fight, we fight in the realm of the spirit soul and body because when we let the body take control if you will or the soul take control we eat and do things we should not do amen we allow ourselves to go further than we would go uh when we're not fighting the way god would have us to fight you know sometimes we're tired and we just want to say okay i'm just going to coast through this thing it is what it is you know god wants better for us than that and so we have to fight with everything that's within us to stay right to do what's right to keep things right according to what the Word of God is saying about the matter in our lives. And so we can't just lay down and get tired, but we have to keep moving and we have to keep fighting and we have to keep trusting and we have to keep believing. You know what? Because God wants us to move forward and, and he wants you, like I said, he wants you to be fit for the fight. He wants you to be ready for battle at all times. You know, there are times that God gives us a reprieve to step back for a minute. Amen. But even in that step back time that, that you're not going through a major struggle, you ought to be soaking up the word of God. So when the next thing comes that you're ready for the next battle, amen. And you're not worried about it. You're not too stressed about it. You can't get yourself together. We ought to be preparing always for the fight. We have to do what? Fight the good fight, fight of, of faith. faith, right? <clears throat> you got to you got to fight good, but you got to fight, right? You got to fight right, but you've got to fight. Elijah, if you will, had to fight. 
Amen. Amen. Elijah had to fight, if you will, the 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 four hundred prophets. Elijah had to fight, if you will, um, um, his own anxiety because he ran and hid himself for three and a half years, and then he came and showed himself to Ahab. For a while there, he thought he was the only one. Sometimes when we stand and make a stand for God, we think we're the only Anyone. one. We think Amen. everybody else is just doing That's whatever right. they want to do. And, and we're the, we the only one fighting. We're the only one trying to do right. We're the only one trying. And God lets us know that we're not the only one. He let him know that he was not the only one. And so he came against, if you will, the apathy of the day. He came against the fear, <laughs> if you will. He came against the things that, uh, 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 that caused... Error in the people, the false prophets, Amen. right? And so, and so, because he fought against those things, he had to come to a place that he could overcome. Yes. And he overcame yes. by being in the presence of God. He overcame by Amen. hearing from God and getting the instructions from God. And when he got the instructions from God, he could walk in boldness and not only challenge the people, challenge the king, but but challenge, if you will, Baal. Amen. You know, we have to remember this. We'll always win if you don't give up the fight. Amen. If you don't stop, if you don't quit, we will always win. And we have to remember that this fight is a spiritual fight. You know, yes, we need to be physically fit it, to go through whatever we're going through. But that that fight is in your mind, the, the battlefield of the mind. Amen. Because that's where the enemy starts. And if he can get your mind and he can get you thinking the wrong way and feeling bad, then, you know, then then we're subject to go the way that he would have us to go. And so we have to keep our minds sharp. Amen. You know, we need to ask God, God, help us keep our mind so that we can move forward in all that God has called us to uh, and not be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Being able to stand on the word, I'm telling you, you have to keep your mind. God said, let this mind that is in me be also in you. Amen. And God, the mind of Christ is what we need to have activated in us in order for us to stick and be able to continue the fight and give God the honor, the glory and the praise. Amen. Amen. So, so stick to it. Stay to the course. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. Don't give in. Don't give yep. out. Don't give up. Amen. Sometimes the battle is yours until you just get up. Sometimes you get weary in the journey. Never weary in the work. Don't get weary in the work. That's right. But if you begin to do the work, the weariness that you felt in the journey will go away because he will rejuvenate you. And you have to find time that you can draw away, that you can go away with That's the right. Lord and allow him to refuel you. So, because sometimes you get weary only because you've, you're operating in the reserves Amen. and not the overflow. Yeah, you're operating in the flesh and not the spirit because the flesh is weak and it gets tired. So have a blessed day and we will see you next time at 747.